Let's get it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the bullpen. In the bullpen today, we have Representative Ro Khanna, Democrat 17th Congressional District out of Cali on the show today. Not a debate, more of a conversation. Representative, an honor to have you on the program. How are you? Dr. Richie, it's an honor to be on. Let's get right into it. We got a few minutes. I want to talk about the January 6th committee hearing. A lot of things are coming out, roughly 90%. We already knew, I had a good idea of how do you think, in your estimation, how do you think this is going so far? Uh, and do you think more should be done? Well, it's getting all the facts out for history to the American public. And it's forward looking. And here's why it's forward looking, Dr. Richie, because there are 57 people who were at the insurrection, who actually scaled the walls of the Capitol or stood outside and cheered that on, who are now running for federal or state office in the United States of America, Secretary of States and Governors. And this is about an ongoing desire for them in 2024 to not honor the democratic results. So we need to wake up to what this committee is saying. They almost stole the election in 2020. And if we don't take decisive action, they will try to steal it in 2024. Let me ask you a direct question because I have some issues with the January 6th committee and how they are doing this presentation. It seems to be a reluctancy to go on record and say, we're gonna recommend to the DOJ criminal charges or criminal investigation, etc. There also seems to be infighting with the January 6th committee as it relates to the direction of that notion. Some seem to want the DOJ to be officially included. And some say, well, they can be included based on what they see for themselves. Why do you think there's this hesitancy to, if they uncover criminal activity, to relay it to the DOJ in an official committee capacity? Well, they should relay their findings officially to the Justice Department. I think what they can't do is recommend to a prosecutor whether to charge someone or not. And that's just congressional ethics. I mean, you wouldn't want me as a congressman to be making recommendations to the local DA or US attorney about whether to charge someone or bring criminal activity. But in terms of referring it to the Justice Department, that makes perfect sense. And then what we can say as a members of Congress is we want accountability and where the facts go. And we shouldn't have other considerations mitigate accountability and that the Justice Department really needs to do what the law requires. This is going to be interesting how it turns out with Jenny Thomas. I know I only got a few more minutes with you. They were reluctant, this is on the record. They did not want to question Jenny Thomas. They questioned a lot of other people. Jenny Thomas has now come out and said, she basically is happy to testify. But think about this, Congressman. We're in the presentation phase. The interview phase has kind of ended. I mean, obviously they can continue to interview people. Why do you think there was this hesitancy to interview Jenny Thomas When she has popped up in text messages and emails with people they did in fact investigate for trying to overturn democracy in America. Why do you think she was protected in a way that none of the other ones were? Dr. Richie, I agree with you. I think sometimes there's too much of a formalism. There's nothing barring them legally from having Ginny Thomas come before the committee. And to explain why was she trying to intervene? Did she think that it was a conflict? Uh, with her husband on the Supreme Court, should her husband have recused himself from these cases? And here's why it matters going forward. Should her husband recuse himself in the future if cases like this come up? So I think people keep saying, well, why does it matter? It was a year and a half ago. And you know what, if it was a year and a half ago, and if everyone in this country had agreed it was horrible and wrong, uh, you know, we could let the Justice Department do its job. The problem is there are a lot of people who are part of the insurrection who are running for office saying, I'm proud of being at the insurrection and I'm going to help uh, make sure that that uh, our party keeps power. That is a scary thing. We need to wake up into the, this country about the threat that we're facing across this country in Secretary of State and Governor elections. Would you support Congressman a bill 
that would basically prohibit individuals who have been convicted of seditious conspiracy against the government or those who have been known to affiliate with that kind of conspiracy to overthrow the government from actually obtaining political office in Congress. And I say this not within the statutory context, but within the rules of the Congress. You all have membership rules. Mm -hmm. Technically, you can remove a member of Congress even if they are duly elected based on the rules of the Congress. Rarely does that happen. But would you support a move like that to ensure that individuals (coughs) who are known actors against the United States government from actually becoming a member of the United States Congress? Yes, I would. And I think it would only strengthen section three of the 14th amendment, which my reading is prohibits people who are actively involved in an insurrection from from serving at least in federal office. So I would support that. All right, Congressman, thank you for your time today. I appreciate you. I know you got a lot of work to do, but thank you for dropping by Indisputable. Appreciate your show, Dr. Rishi. Thank you. Look forward to being back. Same here.